if you want to learn that and stuff like it on the hi-hat, stick around. So that was Leanne Mahavas Green and Gold, the intro on the hi-hat. Today I want to talk about um, getting lots of different kind of flavors, articulations out of the hi-hat. Um, and we're going to use that example, and we're going to use a couple other examples as well. So let me just play through the examples, and then we'll talk about some techniques you can use and things you can practice to get better at this kind of stuff, right? Because it's nice to be able to have more than just one trick on the hi-hat, right? I mean, if you're playing rock music and punk music, you could do this kind of thing. You want to be able to do more than just slosh on the hat, right? So we're going to talk about that today. So let me play the Leanne Le Havis part again. Um, and then we'll play the two other examples. Here we go. The other two examples are Emmett Fenn, his version of Yellow. And let me actually pull that up here. So Emmett Fenn, it's Emmett, E-M-M-I-T-F-E-N-N -N for the last name, Emmett Fenn, his version of Yellow. And then we're also going to look at Can't Stop the Feeling from Justin Timberlake, all right? So let's do the Emmett Fenn bit here. Sounds like this. Okay, that's Emmett Fenn, and then we're going to look at Justin Timberlake, Can't Stop the Feeling. You know this hi-hat intro, let's do it. Okay, so those are the three examples. What's going on in all three of these examples, the hi-hat, there's loud and quiet parts. There's parts where the hats open up a little bit to give more sizzle. The place that you hit the hi-hat with the stick, or I should say the place on the stick that connects with the hi-hat is important. Opening and closing the hi-hat with your foot. All of those things come into play here when you're looking to add articulation um, and have something to say on the hi-hat versus just the same volume level uh, and the same sound every single time. So the first thing we can talk about is where you hit the hi-hat. So if you come in and the tip of the stick, this bead right here, hits on top of the hat, it's gonna give a uh, a more glassy kind of defined sound then if you come in on the side and use the shank of the stick into the side of the hat like right, right here and I'm not talking like the side like this I'm just talking using the same shank coming into the symbol here versus on top of it that's gonna give you more of a sloshy sound even when the hats are closed and there's kind of everything in between that so up here to down here the other thing to notice is when you play, you can play with your shank more on top of the hat too. There's lots of stuff you can do, right? You can experiment with getting different sounds out of the, the hi-hat. But that's the idea is that as you move the stick around and you open the hi-hat up or close it a little bit with your foot, you're going to get different sounds and you can mix those sounds together to create interest. So that's, that's something to notice with your stick. And it's not just the right hand, it's the left as well. Though I do find myself with the right um, <clears throat> controlling more of this articulation that we're talking about, the left. I find myself more often playing 
maybe on the top of the hat with the with the left. Or if I'm playing on the side, I kind of lock that in. I don't change the left as much. Maybe that's something to just continue to get better at um, and improve on. So that's where to hit with the stick. Now, the second thing to think about is how high is your stick when you hit the hi-hat, the stick height, right? The higher up your stick is when you let it fall down, the louder the sound. And so a big problem if you're inexperienced or a beginner drummer or you've been playing for years with no direction or no lessons is you're not really going to get the dynamic range between your different strokes because you only have one gear you only have one volume level you can really do that's because you're grabbing the stick really hard so it doesn't actually matter as much what height the stick is at you're not letting the stick fall into the symbol you're the one who's just taking your hand whether it's up here and smacking it down, or whether it's down here and, and smacking it down, the volume level is going to be about the same. So you need to stay loose, look at my hand technique video, go over to my better hands course, and go from beginning to end and rebuild your hands if you're having any trouble with this, because it's not just a quick one exercise and you've got it. You've got to rebuild your fulcrum, you've got to make sure you're holding the stick lightly, you've got to learn to play. loose rebound strokes on different surfaces and then you've got to be able to stop the stick down near the hi-hat so that you can then play accents and taps and add these different volume levels dynamics and articulations right so i'll just play through a couple of these examples that we did at the beginning and try to pay attention to the topics or the um I can't think of the word, the techniques that we've just talked about. So let's try it. Can you imagine if I was trying to just play that all at the same stick height? It's just horrible. Really, all that's going on in something like that is it's just right, left, right, left, right, left the whole time. That's all it is, but some of those rights are accented some of the rights are not some of the lefts might be more accented with an open or a closed like there's infinite number of possibilities and you just have to be the one who has complete control over what's going on here right um say one other example the can't stop the feeling listen to this So for that accent, shank into the side of the hat. It's not completely closed down. It's a little bit open to get a nice kind of sizzle sound. And then that second stroke with the left, first of all, the sticking is right, right, left, right. And a lot of times with hi-hat, the sticking is important too. So pay attention to that. But I'm kind of hitting the left right there. It's not the tip. Otherwise, it would sound like... It's not the tip, it's... I'm not playing high strokes here. Finessing it, right? This kind of stuff, I know it's frustrating. There's really no shortcut. It's building up your hands, building up your technique to be able to do this. And my better hands course is, well, that's why I built my better hands course. It's because I know people might be looking for a quick and easy way to learn this, but you've just got to rebuild your hands. Um, and then you'll thank yourself because you'll be able to play all this kind of stuff, make it sound good. And better hands course is a free trial. Head on over. Walk, we walk through all of the steps that it takes to rebuild your hands. So that's what I got for you today. Let me um, 
kind of get us out of here by playing through these one more time. And I hope you have a great week. Thanks for checking this out.